Hello, I'm Stefanos. I'm a QGIS core developer. I work for Lutra Consulting, and I'm going to show you a few of the latest improvements in QGIS 3D and point cloud stuff during the last uh, couple of years. So, uh, 3D views in QGIS uh, were introduced in QGIS uh, 3 back in 2018, and it's built on top of the Qt 3D framework, which uh, may eventually start moving away from because of reasons, and um, it currently supports uh, displaying vector, raster, mesh, and point cloud layers in a 3D view. Now, point clouds were introduced back in 2020 and 21 uh, with the two successful crowdfunding campaigns, uh, Lutra Consulting in collaboration with North Road and Hobu, and uh, the first version was 3.18, including point cloud support. Uh, one of the first things improved for point clouds was uh, implementing this eye dome lightning effect in uh, 3D views so that uh, points can actually stand out uh, based on um, um, their neighboring points. So uh, points get shaded and uh, you can actually distinguish uh, slopes in the 3D views in point clouds. Uh, back in 3.24, um, we implemented uh, ordered rendering in the 2D views because of the nature of, um, um, of, of, tiled, uh, of uh, tiled point clouds. Uh, it's often the case uh, that uh, points with a higher elevation are not always rendered on top of points with lower elevation. So, uh, we implemented an uh, ordered rendering where points are sorted before being rendered and uh, you can actually like see the roof instead of the floor, like in this example. Now in 3.26, cloud-optimized GeoTIFFs support was introduced. Uh, so um, um, this is a similar idea to the COGS, cloud-optimized GeoTIFFs. So it's a... Uh, um, it's uh, the same logic as the EPT format. It's a tiled format uh, structured just in a single uh, file. And uh, it can actually be streamed over uh, the internet. So only the necessary parts of the file that uh, you need for rendering are fetched. And uh, you can actually use data on remote servers without having to download like lots of gigabytes of uh, data. And... Um, yeah, both local and remote COPS files uh, can be loaded in QGIS. Now, another change in uh, 3.26 was uh, to uh, like prettify a bit this classifier renderer. Uh, it used to be to populate all individual uh, theoretical classes uh, in the dataset, even if they didn't contain any points but now you get uh, just the classes that you actually have in your data set. And uh, you also get a, like a percentage value of how many points are in your class so that you can actually uh, get a better image about your data. Uh, filtering of point clouds was also introduced in 3.26. So you can uh, right click a layer, select filter, and uh, you can actually type in um, a filter expression similar to how you do for uh, vector layers or tabular data in general, and uh, only uh, the points that actually satisfy the condition are rendered. So you can limit your uh, um, the actual rendered points without changing the um, the rendering style. Uh, Another issue introduced in 3.26 was to get this uh, option to follow the 2D symbology for 3D symbol in point clouds because they're used, this used to lead to user confusion because the 2D symbology and 3D symbology tabs in layer styling were very similar because it like, contained the classes and the user would try to change the 2D symbology and say, hey, my style is not applied in the 3D view, what's going on? So now unless the user explicitly selects a different renderer for the 3D views, uh, the 2D symbology is followed. 
Also in 3.26, uh, render point clouds as a surface. So uh, in 3D views, um, before rendering the points, the points are triangulated and uh, actual triangles are rendered. So um, uh, you don't see uh, void errors in between points. It's all uh, like, feels like a surface. Then in 328, the item lightning effect was uh, also kind of ported to be used in 2D views. So this made uh, rendering point clouds in, uh, in 2D actually usable because without it, you just see like a sea of points without distinguishing anything. While with the uh, item lightning enabled, you can actually see, get an idea of the slopes and the texture, the trees, everything. Exporting of point clouds was also in 328, so uh, you can actually export parts or your whole uh, point cloud file to a vector layer, if for some reason you actually wanna do this. Then in 326, the elevation profile tool was introduced uh, in collaboration with North Road again. Um, you get to generate profiles for uh, any 3D uh, data, like DMs for rasters, uh, uh, vector layers, and point cloud layers also. So you can create the cross-section views of uh, your point cloud layer. Uh, it also supports uh, mesh layers. You can zoom in, zoom out, change the symbology, and also measure um, on the profile. And uh, they can also be included in, uh, uh, in print layouts. Now for the 3D view, several improvements. In uh, 324, we introduced this uh, 3D map view manager. So it used to be the case that when you click X on a 3D view, the 3D view was completely closed and all the settings you had done were lost. So now the 3D views you've opened stay stored in the uh, project. And uh, when you close them, they're just hidden. So you can use the 3D, manage, the 3D map view manager to reopen the closed views and also rename them so that you can uh, like set usable names and you can identify your views. Docking and undocking, this was also in 324 and it then, uh, uh, this also got implemented in other kind of windows, window widgets in QGIS. This is the similar logic to as to how it was for the attribute table. You can use an operating system level uh, a window or a docked widget which you can dock uh, dock it on the sides of your um, uh, 2D view. Then in 326, we introduced the semi-transparent vector objects. So vector layers who which have a 3D rendering setup, 3D renderer setup, uh, you can actually um, uh, specify an opacity for them and uh, they can be rendered semi-transparent. Uh, another feature in 326 is the syncing of 2D and 3D views. So uh, this is really useful when uh, like examining data and uh, you're panning the 2D view so you can set the 3D view to actually follow the same extent and vice versa. Then in 328, another effect slightly similar to the item lightning is this ambient occlusion. Um, in this picture, like the first uh, uh, is without any of them. The second one is uh, on the top. It's the item lightning. Uh, and on the bottom, it's the um, uh, ambient occlusion on itself and then a combination of both effects. So yeah, you get nicely shaded point clouds and 3D views in general. This also applies to uh, vector data. Then in three. 32, uh, a big improvement in the 3D measure tool. Now it uh, follows 
uh, 3D objects, so you can measure down a slope or you can measure the uh, elevation of a, the, the, the height of a building, uh, like snapping on the uh, top floor and on the bottom. Another big feature in 332 is virtual point clouds. So this is a concept similar to how virtual rasters, VRT files work. It's a JSON structure which holds the file names or links to other COPSI files and uh, their extent. So uh, you can create a single layer in QGIS which may contain like thousands of, um, of point cloud files and uh, uh, they won't be loaded at all unless actually needed. So when you're zoomed out, either in the 2D or 3D view, you just get their extents rendered. And uh, when you zoom in close enough, um, the files get uh, loaded. And another big thing in 3.32 is point cloud processing. Uh, uh, a, a tool named Pedal Wrench was uh, created. Uh, it's a command line tool which is, you can also use like a standalone. And um, uh, you can uh, actually avoid building complex pedal pipelines even for simple tasks because you, all this functionality like clipping, merging, reprojecting, uh, and exporting and conversion stuff, they exist in Pedal, but you, will need, you would need to create pipelines for it, which uh, sometimes it's cumbersome and for the average user, it's probably above their level. And now it's really easy just in the processing toolbox to pick up a tool, even use it in a model. And you can also use a virtual point cloud as input for uh, those uh, tools so that you can process like the, uh, big data. Then in 3.34, a big change, uh, Cesium 3D tiles was introduced again in collaboration with uh, Northroad. Um, this was sponsored by the Cesium grant and uh, you can actually load uh, 3D tiles uh, streamed uh, over the net. Uh, uh, Google Earth also shares uh, its data in this uh, format. So if you have an API key, you can actually add Google Earth 3D layer in uh, QGIS and use it both in 2D view and in the 3D view. Now in 3.36, uh, point cloud size overrides. This was built uh, as a request for a client. So you can, uh, um, initially you, could, uh, you would have a single point size for all the points in your point cloud, but uh, now you can actually pick some classes and override their size and their opacity in the, in the 2D view or their size in the 3D view. Opacity in the 3D view is not yet implemented. Uh, so in this way you could, for example, like may use uh, larger point sizes for ground so that you fill any gaps in between points and uh, probably thinner points for buildings or for vegetation so that it appears uh, like more like semi-transparent. Uh, in 3.36, point clouds could be rendered as a surface in 2D views too, similar to the feature I showed you before in 3D views. So um, uh, a triangulation is done before rendering and uh, no gaps are uh, rendered in your map canvas. And um, this usually has a, results in a very crisper image, uh, as in this example. Uh, another big thing in 3.36 was exposure of the Python API for 3D views. So now uh, one can create views using the Python API in plugins and uh, manipulate the existing ones, like open a current, uh, a current view or close it, and they even manipulate the camera in those views. So you can do tricks like uh, open a couple of views and link their cameras together. So even link that to the 2D view and you could pan one view and the other 
uh, view follows. And uh, other improvements in 3.36, uh, like we've added another layer of caching in point clouds, so uh, the actual decoded blocks um, uh, are cached. And uh, when requested, they are fetched from the cache. So this results in uh, faster rendering uh, after the initial load of the of a, of a point cloud. Uh, another thing for uh, point cloud users is this uh, change in handling the classification flags. So uh, the classification flags is uh, one attribute in um, in point clouds, which uh, uh, it's it actually encodes four different uh, Boolean variables. So if a point is synthetic or key point or it's withheld or if it, it's an overlap point. So those four true-false values were encoded as an uh, integer. And it was really hard to create a filter or some uh, styling based on a combination on the, of those four. Now they these are exposed are four distinct uh, uh, attributes in the list of attributes for point clouds. And it's very more; it's way more easier to um, to use them. And uh, another thing is uh, changes in the um, the way the copy files are generated uh, for uh, for rendering in QGIS, so that some parts of the metadata of the original last files are preserved, like the global encoding, the creation time, and this uh, the offset of the, that's used in the initial um, the original data. So what's next for the future? During this development, we had some, uh, um, like we made a breakthrough discovery. The Earth is not flat. And uh, we plan to create a, a globe implementation for QGIS 3D. So in uh, hopefully in uh, version 3.42 by next February. Um, we're going to have this ready and uh, the plan is to allow the users to choose between a um, normal uh, limited extent view or a global 3D view. And uh, this will solve current issues with large scenes because right now in the 3D view, if you open a scene that uh, spans several kilometers, uh, camera handling gets uh, bad because of um, uh, numerical stability issues because QGIS 3D view uses float numbers, like QT3D actually, and uh, we need to follow on. So these issues are hope will be hopefully so, uh, solved. This is also in collaboration with North Road and also a part of a Cesium grant uh, similar as the 3D tiles. And another thing that's uh, almost there is the Cesium quantized mesh. This is a, a flexible format for uh, serving uh, elevation data. So it's a, a tile format, and you get um, to serve a triangulate network uh, as an elevation layer in QGIS. So um, the part of the work is already merged in QGIS master, and there's a pending pull request for um, uh, 2D and 3D rendering of the, of the quantized mesh layers. So hopefully it will make it to 340. And uh, thank you. That was it. I kind of rushed it. Uh, thank you, Stefanas, for the interesting 3D QQs. Uh, any question? OK. Well, uh, thank you. That was a very interesting uh, presentation. My name is Terry Jahaga Pedersen in Kongsberg Discovery, and we are working with sonar data that are positive downwards or negative C values. I was very pleased to see that you are now discovering that the, the Earth is uh, not flat anymore. But perhaps, uh, how are you going to tackle the fact that 78% is covered with water and will have negative C values or positive downwards in your rate models? I see you have elevation modules, but will you also have depth modules in, the, in your 3D viewer? Uh, hopefully, this should not be an issue because 
uh, at least initially, we do not plan to set uh, um, uh, a terrain at the globe uh, surface. Uh, no, on second thought, it will it will be an issue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so this is actually a very interesting question. I'd really like to discuss that because uh, your feedback will be definitely usable. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, any other question? No? Okay. Thank you. My name is Michael Duchamp. I would like to know if you, if we like to play with 3D data, do you have um, a, a good, uh, complete data set on a region somewhere in the, in the world? Uh, we can download and use uh, to with some styles uh, on them, uh, a ready-to-go package to play with uh, 3D in QGIS to help people discover all the features you, you just mentioned? Uh, the I don't think there is something uh, like ready, uh, like packed to be served like this, but uh, uh, many countries serve data, like LiDAR data, which is freely available for download. Um, and also for playing around, um, uh, both QGIS and PDAL have some test files that could be used so in the test suite. So, uh, do you think that would be of interest for uh, the average user to have like a... Mm. Okay, yeah, we could consider having some way to share like a basic set of data to play around with. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Thank you. Yeah, I want to add a little bit. I think Martin has a list of uh, 3D data around the world in his GitHub. Sorry? Uh, Martin Dobias has the GitHub repository that list of some. Ah, he does? Yes, okay. in his uh, repository somewhere. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I, can, I could share this. I can this. show you later. <laughs> if you send me an email, I can share this, uh, his repository, yeah? Okay, any other question? If not, then thank you very much for thank the uh, presentation.